Premiere Pro has a really nice chroma key effect called Ultra. Let's just take a little look at it. I'm in my effects panel here, and I'm going to just start typing in the word Ultra. And I have to say, now that I'm familiar with most of the effects in Premiere Pro, I tend not to bother searching for them. I do tend to just type in this quick search box, and, and there it is. I'm going to drag and drop this onto my foreground video, which is this green glove shot. And you can see, this is, I'll just turn the audio off on the background there. You can see this is just a lady coming on screen, she's putting on some gloves, she looks around her, and she walks off. Now, I've got in the background just some smoke. I don't really have a back plate for this, but this will do just fine. So, having selected the green gloves.mov shot up in my effect controls, I've got the ultra key effect listed. I'm going to move the playhead on a bit, so I've got a, a reference on screen. And I'm going to click on the eyedropper here and pick out something to use as my key color. You can see it doesn't do a bad job right away. If I go to my output menu and switch this to showing me the alpha channel instead of showing me the composite result, you can see actually it's not bad, but it's not good either. I've got a lot of little regions in the shadow portions of the background there that aren't an absolutely perfect clean green. If I leave this alpha channel mode on and get to the eyedropper again, I could perhaps choose another bit of the green, I can choose another bit, but there's no cumulative option for you to click and add and add and add to your key. So instead, I'm going to just expand out all of these other controls and let's pull down a little bit so you can see what's going on. And I'm just going to start to adjust these. Now, transparency is your default transparency and 45% is usually fine. But I'm just going to start tweaking and tuning the shadows and the highlights here, the tolerance for the key, maybe adjust the black point pedestal. You'll find very often that under the Mac cleanup category of controls, cranking up the contrast for the key is going to have quite a big effect. Maybe adjust the midpoint for that, so I'm getting a cleaner highlights. I um, don't really want to choke the key, that's going to reduce the size of the key, or especially soften the edges, although you might find if you've got a lot of loose flying hair, you want to do that. And oops, maybe not so much. Bring in the highlights. Okay, that's not too bad. I've still got a couple of dodgy areas. I've got a, a little bit at the top left corner here and a little bit over on the right. And I might be able to use some of the other controls here to, to adjust the key and clean this up. That's no, not too bad. Still getting a tiny bit of edging over on the right. And if we turn off the alpha channel, we can see what that is. It looks to me like, um, looks to me like we've got something in the shot. So if I turn off the effects altogether. Yeah, there's definitely something on the edge of frame there. So there's a couple of options to get rid of that. One is to just leave it as it is and hope nobody notices. That's very unlikely to work. Key's not too bad apart from that corner. Another option is to get a garbage map. So I'm going to go down to my effects and I'm just going to start typing garbage. And you can see that Premiere Pro's got multiple garbage map options. Now these aren't infinite you can only go up to 16 points but given that every point is keyframeable you may not want more than 16 points i'm going to be super lazy and put a four point garbage mat on this clip and then i'm going to select the garbage mat heading in my effect controls panel and you'll notice when you do that that you get these control handles for the effect i'm going to set my zoom to let's see maybe yeah 25 percent and then i'm going to be quite lazy about the edges of this I'm going to pull in the handles a little bit, and then you can see now I've lost that foreground element. If I remove the effect, there it is. It's very, very subtle, but you can, you can definitely see it. Of course, I've got a new problem now, which is that as the lady walks off screen, she's being chopped off by the garbage mat. No easy solution to that if your action does need to leave the screen, other than perhaps to remove the garbage mat altogether. Select your clip, go up to your motion, expand that out, go to your scale, and maybe we can get away with just 101 maybe. There you go, 1% scale. And now I don't have that detail on the edge of the picture. So again, applying a chroma key effect is just a question of looking for it. If you type in chroma key though in the quick search, you're gonna get an older chroma key effect. It's almost a legacy effect that doesn't really work as well as ultra. If I just expand out my video effects, 
and expand out keying, you can see we've actually got a whole list of different effects for keying. The ones to look out for, I would say, are the ones that have this CUDA support. If the effect has this go faster icon next to it, it means it's one of the more recently updated effects. Ultra key, for example, is great. Notice we also have a track mat key, so we can use any other layer as a dynamic mask for a layer of video. Perhaps you've got a title or graphic you want to use to define a key, you can use that if you want to. But in any case, that is working with the ultra key effect in Premiere Pro CS6.